Galaxy herbicide from BASF. The perfect mix of Bacigran and Blazer with no carryover. You already know New Accent controls quackgrass. You've probably read it even stops rising. And no doubt, you've heard Accent controls your toughest grasses. You know all the things Accent eliminates today. But we thought you'd like to know all the things it saves for tomorrow. The Accent is on tomorrow. Dan pulls out all the stops to save Christine's life. Do you save Christine? How can I possibly repay you? What does Dan want in return? I can't sleep with you. Will he take no for an answer? Perhaps there are some of us here who are even alive today due to the unselfish generosity of another. Or will Christine finally give in? All right, I'll bring you there! On the next Night Court. Wednesday night at 6.30 on Receptive Channel 9. Every field commander in history has had doubts about the outcome of the battle ahead. Do you have any doubts whatsoever that you will win? Well, I have been not even one in a million. Tonight on Primetime News, Iraqi President Saddam Hussein talks about the Persian Gulf War. From KMSB Television, America's number one independent station, this is Prime Time News with Rod Grams, Heather Harden, meteorologist Joe Dandrea, Perry Williams on sports, and the entire award-winning Prime Time News team. Good evening and thanks for joining us. We will get to the interview with Saddam Hussein in just a moment. But first, in Washington tonight, President Bush went on nationwide television with his State of the Union address. About half of the speech dealt with the war in the Persian Gulf. And again, the president made it clear tonight why the U.S. is in this war. We know why we're there. We are American, part of something larger than ourselves. For two centuries, we've done the hard work of freedom, and tonight, we lead the world in facing down a threat to decency and humanity. On the nation's economy, the president said he's not unrealistic about the future, but he said there are many reasons to be optimistic. Our economy is still over twice as large as our closest competitor. We will get this recession behind us and return to growth soon. And returning to the Persian Gulf, the president again paid tribute to American forces serving there and promised to bring them home as soon as possible. Well, the wait is over for a videotape of an interview with Saddam Hussein. Tonight, CNN released excerpts of the interview with the Iraqi leader by Peter Arnett. Now, a reminder that the video was censored by Iraqi officials. Here now is part of the video where Saddam Hussein responds to the question who will win the war and why he is calling it the mother of all wars. I uh, just want to clarify one thing about the code name or nickname that we have given to this battle. When we called it the mother of battles, we didn't talk about its military page or chapter because it hadn't occurred as yet. But we called it the mother of battles because in this battle, the truth from falsity became so clear and so divergent we suffered from each other. Because we are convinced that God is on our side. Will there be a greater battle, will there ever be a greater battle than the battle in which we have one, on the one side, God leading, and on the other, devil or Satan leading? See for yourself now. America. The United States. America That is the supra power of the world. Britannia Alma. Yes. That's called the mega superpower of the world, the United States, and then the great, the other great powers, Britain. Great. Huh? Great. Yes. Great Britain. Uh, great powers, uh, the Great Britain, that is, as we call it, yes, as they call themselves, yes. France, the other great power. 
اذا كل دول السلاح الكبير مع كل دول الفلوس الوسخه so all the powers of great weaponry combined or united with all the countries of dirty money are grouped together against who? against Iraq Primetime News will carry an extended play of the interview tomorrow night on our news. It appears from the interview that Saddam Hussein is digging in for a long war. But the Pentagon is reporting that his troops suffered a heavy blow today. We go to Kevin Burns for more on this and other golf stories. Kevin? Well, Rod, Saddam Hussein may have suffered his biggest single-day loss of ground troops so far in the war. Allied warplanes blasted an Iraqi convoy overnight in southern Iraq. A Marine Corps spokesman says two dozen tanks Armored personnel carriers and supply vehicles were destroyed. Colonel Ron Richard said of the Iraqi convoy, quote, they were sloppy and they got caught. Marine Corps gunners also reportedly wiped out a complex of bunkers and observation posts in Kuwait. Members of the 1st Marine Division moved to within 1,000 yards of the Saudi-Kuwait border and shelled the Iraqi base. Iraqi troops reportedly did not fire back. U.S. military officials say from now on, they'll attack Iraqi aircraft that try to fly into Iran. In the past few days, between 80 and 90 Iraqi warplanes have landed in Iran for unknown reasons. Officials also say those planes will be shot down if they try to re-enter the war zone. Tonight, the U.S. isn't confirming an Iraqi report that at least one captured Allied airman has been killed in an air raid on Baghdad and that other prisoners have also been hurt. Iraq announced last week that would use POWs as human shields as strategic facilities. Israel may be approaching the day when it fires back on Iraq. Today, Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Ahrens said that unless allies stop Iraq's Scud attacks, the Israeli military will have to take action itself. Ahrens claims Israel's restraint won't last longer than about a month. However, he didn't say exactly how his nation would retaliate against Iraq. Palestinian sources in Lebanon say the PLO has entered into combat in support of Iraq. According to wire service reports, the Palestinians say PLO chief Yasser Arafat ordered a missile attack on Israel this morning. The PLO denies the charge. One source says more than 50 Soviet-built rockets were fired at settlements in Israel's self-declared security zone in southern Lebanon. The rockets reportedly fell short of their targets and no one was hurt. Other sources say Israeli gunboats later shelled a Palestinian refugee camp in apparent retaliation for the incident. And a Palestinian leader reportedly has been assassinated in Kuwait. A senior PLO official says the assistant deputy speaker of the Palestinian parliament in exile was shot as he left his home today. Two other top PLO officials were assassinated some two weeks ago. Of course, we will keep monitoring the situation in the Gulf, and if anything happens, we will pass it on to you. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. A bit of good news about that giant oil slick in the Persian Gulf. It's not getting any bigger. The fire that has been briefed to you at the Sea Island Terminal is now out. And the flow from that terminal has stopped. The slick appears additionally to be breaking up. Saudi officials say there's about 460 million gallons of oil in the water. That is almost three times more than any other spill in history. The Gulf conflict has hit home especially hard for one Minnesota businessman. This man was in Uruguay on business when he attempted to return home to the U.S. last Sunday. Pan American Airlines refused to take him as a passenger because he carries an Iraqi passport. The U.S. government has to do something with these companies. They have to do something. I told them this contradicts with the U.S. law that I have to be treated as a U.S. citizen according to the law. You cannot treat me like this. And they said we don't care. This is the way you are going to handle the situation. It is company's decision. The man who doesn't want to use his last name finally used a Brazilian airline to get to the U.S. He arrived in the Twin Cities this afternoon. Coming up next, 100 years of meatpacking for Hormel. And why a striptease nightclub in St. Paul is getting money from the city for improvements. The story when we return. 
Beginning February 1st for three fabulous days, the St. Paul Civic Center will be filled with rides, great food, and games at the St. Paul Winter Carnival Fun Fair. Friday, February 1st is Fun TV Friday, and kids 12 and under will be admitted free with a Club F TV card. While persons 13 years and older pay just $3 with a card. Stop by Channel 9's booth and buy a Club F TV t-shirt, visit the LaCroix KMSB Club Fun TV Variety Stage, and see Scott Hansen, Jim Calvin, and a host of others. The St. Paul Winter Carnival Fun Fair starting February 1st. Dodge brings the family car within your reach, the Dodge Spirit. Right now, take advantage of $500 cash back on Spirits in stock, plus $750 package savings for up to $1,250 in total savings. Not only is Spirit affordable, it has more room than Honda Accord. An available V6, plus safety features like a driver's airbag, available anti-lock brakes, and more. Dodge Spirit is the family sedan that isn't a stretch to afford. Welcome home, America, to your Dodge dealer. Embers 399 steak and eggs, two farm fresh eggs, three buttermilk pancakes, cash brown potatoes, and a USDA choice sirloin steak, only 399, 24 hours a day for a limited time. Remember the embers. You'll be glad you did. Universal presents an inspiring motion picture for jerks of all ages. Steve Martin is Nathan Johnson, humble, but proud. Some called him saint, some called him sinner, but all who knew him called him the jerk. The new phone's up there! The new phone's up there! It's an inspiration if you don't think about it too much. The jerk. Thursday night at 7 on Receptive Channel 9. In February, the movies on 9 are hot. Karate Kid 2, An Officer and a Gentleman, Alien, Terms of Endearment, Bat 21. In 91, 9's the one for movies. A coalition led by police officers will try to ban assault rifles in the coming legislative session. Citizens for a Safer Minnesota say increased violence nationwide indicates the need for more restrictions. In Minnesota, few of these weapons have been used in crimes or seized, but those pushing for more control over firearms say it's an important step. We have to do something, and, and, and we have to start now. We obviously have to plan for other generations, uh, uh, and, and hopefully uh, uh, we'll have a uh, much uh, safer society. The coalition includes teachers in several community groups. They will also work for the Brady Bill at the federal level, a seven-day waiting period for handguns, which Minnesota already has. The city of St. Paul is scrambling to save face over reports that state urban renewal money is being spent on a parking lot for a strip joint. The controversy first surfaced when Governor Carlson called the incident a scandalous use of taxpayers' money. We get more on this story tonight from Susan Austin. The city of St. Paul is learning a painful lesson from the pain reliever. The bar, which features new dancing behind a glass wall, has been approved for a $110,000 grant from the Urban Revitalization Action Program, known as URAP. The money will be used to build a new parking lot to satisfy years of complaints by neighbors. You know, what makes this sensitive and what makes it frustrating to me is that we've been trying to get rid of that kind of business. But, I mean, blatant, you know, complete, total new dancing. Embarrassed by the political fallout, the city council today began debating a resolution that would strip the pain reliever of its grant by returning spending authority to them. The problem started years ago when the city gave neighborhoods the power to choose where URAP money would be spent. Ultimately, and the, the bottom line is the buck stops here at the city council, and I think the neighborhoods support that. The owner of the pain reliever was promised the money last October. As long as he matched it two to one, he kept up his part of the bargain by financing a major remodeling project at the nightclub. We're a legitimate uh, licensed tax-paying business, and, and uh, we uh, fall within all of the guidelines of the URAP. City officials say taxpayer money was never designed to be used to help a strip joint. They worry, though, that this isolated incident could jeopardize the URAP program, which they say has a positive track record. Susan Austin, Primetime News, St. Paul. Before the council can act on the matter, a public hearing must be held first, and that hearing has been set now for February 14th.
2,000 stockholders are meeting tonight reviewing the astonishing success of their company for the past 100 years. That's how old the Hormel Company is, and despite the setback of a bitter labor dispute five years ago, Hormel and the town of Austin have grown together. A steady stream of Austinites poured into the new Hormel Museum today, looking at artifacts of its history. Hormel was started by a young man who came from Chicago but saw a better way of life in Austin. Men like Gilbert Ferguson know, now 72, he remembers being upset as a teenager when he couldn't get a job at the plant. Jay Hormel hired him as a hand on his estate. Later on, when I drove Jay Hormel to town to get his hair cut, in an old 36 Ford station wagon, and when he got his hair cut, he took, told us to drive right down by the employment office. And he said, we're not hiring here right now, but we let the other fellows go by the wayside, and we're not, we can use people like you in the plant. So he put me on the plant payroll, then back out the farm for a month or so. He stayed 43 years. Much has changed in this 100 years, mostly its size, technology, and products. Hormel gradually got out of the slaughtering operations in the 80s and is concentrating on ready-to-cook products. Despite the, uh, the labor problem that they had a few years back, um, the company obviously is still based in this state. Uh, it's, it's a growing concern. It employs a good number of people. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think things are only getting it better for Hormel. But those labor problems left a permanent scar. In 100 years, Hormel had experienced only one other strike, a brief one in 1933. Nothing like the violent one of 1985 and 6 that attracted national attention. Now labor has a new union committed to healing and restoring the unity of the past. I think we have reestablished a good working relationship with the company. Uh, we both have uh, respect for each other. And I think we're making... Uh, more progress towards common goals that are to the benefit of both sides. Today, Hormel is a worldwide company with nearly $3 billion in sales annually. And you might ask, how is it that Hormel escaped the buyout frenzy of the 80s when other food companies were devoured? The Hormel Foundation, which funds local civic and charitable projects, owns 44% of the stock. That huge block of votes kept outsiders out in Hormel and Austin. Tonight in business, the Ford truck assembly plant in St. Paul faces another temporary shutdown because of lagging sales. The plant will be closed next week, and officials say there will be additional down weeks unless there's a big turnaround in sales. Control Data is reporting a gain of $2.7 million for last year. That's not much, but it follows the $680 million loss in 1989, the worst loss in the company's 32-year history. And NSP is asking, asking for another rate increase, this time 8.1%, or about $98 million. The $121 million request was turned down last summer. The Dow Jones closed up eight points today, stopping at 26.62 on moderate trading of 156 million shares. And we'll be right back. It's morning and another day. There are kids to get dressed, breakfast to be made. The bus is coming, as usual, just a few minutes sooner than it should. But for a few moments between the sound of your alarm clock and the first shout of a waking child, you have a little time to think of what this is all about. What it's about is what it's always been about. Big people helping little people to be big themselves one day. It's not easy. It never has been. But then your mother managed to live through it, didn't she? Besides, when you really think about it, what else could you possibly do that could ever be so important? MJB wishes you a good morning and a wonderful day. Solo. You can't forget the softener in Solo, because Solo is detergent and fabric softener in one. Solo gives you a clean so soft, it's actually fluffed up higher with softness. No, no, no. Yes, Mother, I missed it. Next time, get Solo. It cleans with a softness you can't forget. Have fun. 
getting out and enjoying yourself. That's what life is all about. And it's easy when you have the best bladder control protection. And the Pend Elastic Leg Undergarments give you the best protection yet with Absorb Lock, a super absorbent system that locks in 25% more. They're the best protection and the best way for you to get back into life. Hey! <laughs> get back into life with the Pend. With Absorb Lock Protection. Well, it was plenty cold today when we drove down to Austin today to do the Hormel story. I bet it was no warmer here. No, if you like it cold, this was the place to oh. be, I guess, today. Joe? I thought it was bitter today. Certainly right, uh, Rod and Heather. Temperatures approached minus 30 over portions of northern Minnesota. It's getting close again right now, but it's not going to last too much longer. 12 below at International Falls, 12 below at St. Cloud, 6 below Rochester. Eau Claire coming in at 9 below right now. But if you look to the west, temperatures are warming up. It's in the teens across the central Dakotas, 14 at Bismarck. Some clouds out here. The winds are kicking up. That's going to happen here later on tonight. Temperatures should actually rise toward dawn. A little bit of good news. Let's check out what happened today here in the metro area. Uh, we did have lots of bright sunshine after a canopy of clouds early this morning. Six degrees and minus five for the high and low temperature today. Averages now are about 21 and zero, so we're well below that. Our record low is 29 below, set in 1951. Currently, we have a, cl a clear sky. Our temperature is at 5 below, 71% for the relative humidity. A southeast breeze at 7, creating a wind chill index of minus 18, and the pressure is falling, 30.12. Pressure is falling because that cold area of clear high pressure is moving away from us now. It's centered over Iowa. As it moves away, this area of low pressure up in western Canada, another Alberta clipper, will dive southeastward. You can see the clouds associated with that, along with some wind, and as that moves southeastward, our temperatures will go up along with that, a chance of a little bit of light snow and flurries. But most of the heavy weather is bottled up along the stationary frontal boundary across the southeast. There were reports of some damaging tornadoes near Kenner, Louisiana, and also some heavy rains along the Gulf Coast, about two inches. North of the front, it's been snowing in Missouri and Illinois, where snow advisories are up. For tomorrow, that snow should move northeastward toward New England, rain south from New York City all the way down to uh, Mobile, Alabama. Farther to the northwest, we'll have this little clipper moving along the U.S.-Canadian border. Best chance for accumulating snows will be in the northern half of the state. We may see a dusting here in southern Minnesota. 24 for the high in Chicago, 42 as that mild air moves into the Denver area. Here in the upper Midwest, still on the chilly side with those winds blowing tomorrow. Highs generally in the teens, a little bit cooler across the Arrowhead. Here's a look at our metro area forecast. For tonight, we're calling for increasing clouds and flurries or light snow possible late as that warmer air tries to move on in. 5 to 10 below early tonight, then temperatures will rise toward dawn. For tomorrow, a uh, mostly cloudy day, some flurries or light snow possible, highs upper teens. South winds will shift to the west at about 10 to 20 miles an hour. Right now, we're not looking for any great accumulations here in southern Minnesota, maybe an inch or two in the north. For tomorrow night, variably, cl variably uh, cloudy skies, occasional flurries, so lows of 5 to 10 above. And then for Thursday, partly cloudy skies with highs in the teens. Rod and Heather, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Joe. Coming up next, Perry Williams, of course. He'll have sports. But first, let's take a look at tonight's daily three numbers. For four days in January, Highland has one goal, movement of inventory. Highland's pre-inventory clearance is set for January 27th, 28th, 29th, and 30th. Thursday the 31st, Highland will be closed to count everything not sold. Because Highland finds themselves with massive quantities of goods, these are not sale prices, they are clearance prices. For instance, get this RCA 25-inch tabletop TV with on-screen display for just $347. Highland's pre-inventory clearance is now through Wednesday, closed Thursday. We'd rather sell it than count it. Moms have to get up early to make their rounds. Half my patients. They know the way to doctor their family's coughs is with Robitussin. Because more doctors and pharmacists recommend Robitussin than any other cough medicine. Oh. Not me too. The spoon. I think he's coming down with a mask cap. Robitussin. Recommended by more doctors, pharmacists, and Dr. Mom. And for nighttime relief of colds with coughs, use Robitussin Night Relief. We want to come out and party and play. Come party with Nia Peoples and the rhythm of the streets on the Party Machine. Wig nights at 12.05 on Receptive Channel 9. It's been busy for the Twins. Just moments ago, they signed free agent outfielder Chili Davis, a one-year contract plus an option year. Earlier today, they lost another so-called new-look free agent. First, of course, last week, Third baseman Gary Gaetti signed a four-year deal with California. And today, relief pitcher Juan Berenguer joined the Atlanta Braves, signing a two-year guaranteed contract. Terms not announced. He was 8-5 and five last season. 
because the Twins already have Rick Aguilera and Steve Bedrosian in the bullpen to fill in. Other free agents include Jack Morris with Tigers. They have until midnight to sign with a new team. The North Stars returning from their three-game road trip tomorrow night. They'll play Detroit at the Met Center. Game time of that one, 7.30. NHL scoreboard tonight. The Islanders beating Hartford 8-1. to Pittsburgh with the return of Mario Lemieux to home ice. Gets his first of the year, and the Penguins beat Washington 3-2. Winnipeg over Quebec and St. Louis big up against Buffalo in the third. Troy Murray and the Chicago Blackhawks getting a major scare last night. The puck hit Murray in the mouth. He swallowed his bridge work, cut his throat, bleeding but unable to breathe. Thanks to quick medical help, he was rushed to the hospital and now okay and back traveling with the team. Indeed, good news. The Timberwolves head coach Bill Musselman called his team's shooting performance last night against Boston pathetic. They lost 108-87. Maybe a redemption tomorrow night. The Wolves play Sacramento at the Target Center. That game starts at 7 o'clock. NBA action night, San Antonio at Houston. A wild one in the fourth quarter. Kenny Smith to steal and to score. The Rockets take the lead. Moments later, Sean Higgins, the rookie out of Michigan, returns the favor for the Spurs. The jumper, we're tied at 87. Now the clock is winding down, and Kenny Smith will do it all. Take it down the lane, put it up and off the glass for two. He scored the last eight points for the Rockets, 23 in the night. Houston beats San Antonio, 91-89. Other NBA scores tonight, Cleveland over Charlotte, 125-106. Orlando beating Phoenix by a bucket. Washington over Miami, Bernard King at 26 points. And look at Denver ahead of Milwaukee, and uh, Milwaukee hardly ever lo loses at home. Only one so far this year. All hmm. right. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Thank you, Perry. We'll have more news in a moment, but first, tonight's Winter Carnival Medallion Hunt crew, a driving force of Old St. Paul, can help you win our game. So keep on trucking as you try to come up with the name. And we'll be right back. Take a deep breath. Hold on to your hat. John Morrell, Flintstone Franks with Eitan Chevrolet Geo and Minor Ford present the world's toughest rodeo at Met Center February 1st through the 3rd. For Friday, get ticket discount coupons from Tom Thumb Store. Saturday, enjoy a free K102 FM dance featuring High Noon. On Sunday, all kids get free Pepsi Cowboy hats at half price tickets. Get your tickets early at Dayton's or Met Center. To charge by phone, call 989-5151. It's the most fun you can have with your boots on. Got a new friend, bright as can be, goes by the name of Socrates. He can teach me math, spelling and art, we're James too, he's really smart. Socrates makes learning a game when you play with him, he'll entertain your brain. Socrates, the computer-like educational video system that turns learning into child's play. <laughs> when you play with Socrates, he'll entertain your brain. Hundreds of residents of Duluth Superior braved the cold weather today to rally support for U.S. action in the Persian Gulf. Two University of Wisconsin Superior students recruited the volunteers to stand hand-in-hand -hand across the Bong Bridge to show their support of the troops and that residents of Duluth Superior can work together on a common cause. The supporters also held yellow ribbons with the words, We Care, to form a human greeting card to U.S. troops in the Gulf. Let's get another check on that weather. A little warmer, maybe. Yeah, if you don't mind, a few clouds. Temperatures will be going up a little bit uh, for tomorrow. We're looking for a high temperature up near 20 degrees, along with that mostly cloudy skies, and a chance for some light snow and flurries. Lauren can argue with that, Joe. Thank you. Perry. Twin sign free agent outfielder Chili Davis tonight. So Chili will be here all summer long. Some big names coming. Yeah, and Juan Berenguer, he's gone. He joins the Atlanta Braves. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us. We do appreciate it. Good night, everyone. Good night. Your boss on the phone, he says, do you still work here or not? I call the airline like you said, and sure, there's a later flight tomorrow. When you just can't wait to get started, start with a champion from Holiday Plus. Pound for pound, the most powerful automotive battery you can buy. Get your champion now at Holiday Plus. Discover the area's largest in-stock selection of paneling at Menards. Enhance any room with Abbott Tibby Vinyl Decorators, just $11.99 a sheet. Mist Tile Board is only $14.99 a sheet. 
Plus, save on Armstrong Noax vinyl flooring by easy to install stylistic, just 69 cents per tile. Or Cambrai, only $4.98 a square yard. Count on Menards for selection and saving. Save big money at Menards. Explore the majestic Serengeti in Florida at Bush Gardens. Wherever the sun glows, wherever the wind blows, wherever the water flows, wherever it aspires, this is my home. Freedom, this is my home. Family, this is my home. Joy, this is my home. Love. Welcome to my Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay, Florida. No place else.